Russell, I want to talk about some good news from my perspective. Nobody's saying Assad's a good guy, but the West did start the war, did fund the rebels starting two and a half years ago. And for the first time uh, since 1782, when the British Parliament voted to end the war against the colonies, they voted down uh, the prime minister in the UK, David Cameron, wanting to go to war. Uh, Obama, he has a 9% approval rating on this war in a Reuters Washington Post poll. I mean, when Bush did all these lies, he had a 72. Now it's very unpopular. I see this as a sea change where libertarians, conservatives, uh, liberals, everybody I know sees through this and knows that it's about the takeover of the Middle East that Wesley Clark uh, expose the seven nations they wanted to target. What is your view on Syria, and uh, are you optimistic and, and excited that uh, the UK Parliament, for the first time in 200 years, did the right thing on war? I certainly agree with you that that vote is a result of widespread disillusionment with the political process. I, I think that obviously the Middle East is one of the most complex issues uh, in uh, contemporary world affairs and has been for millennia. What I believe is that our focus has to be on the humanitarian aspects, the, the displaced refugees and the uh, hundreds of thousands that are suffering as a result of uh, uh, military conflict in that area. Uh, what I also believe, Alex, is that we've got, these affairs are conducted behind a veil of disingenuity and duplicity. It's very difficult for any of us to understand what's truly happening. I've not read that book you said, that Seven Nations thing, but, you know, essentially my experience tells me that, you know, whatever they are telling me, I intuitively don't trust. It's typically about the interests of big business and government and how they align with one another. So that's what I'm going to assume until I hear otherwise. Like, you know, the, the claims were going into Iraq and Afghanistan were duplicitous, and so my, the starting point I have is going to be not to trust any um, any any advocacy of military action in Syria. Whilst it's not an issue I can pretend to fully understand, it seems like it's extremely complex. That there are many factions fighting there. There's no clear goodies and baddies situation. Absolutely. Ron Paul recently came out and said he basically thinks it's a false flag. There's evidence that the Al Qaeda groups staged the chemical attack, but uh, it is obviously an incredibly complex situation. <laughs> I went through the Pentagon 10 days after 9-11, and an officer from the Joint Staff called me into his office and said, I, I want you to know, he said, sir, we're going to attack Iraq. And I said, why? He said, we don't know. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later. I saw the same officer. I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. It is not new, and it is not order. 